perplexes the sensitive heart more than the problem of human suffering. Senator Kennedy used to say that anyone who was undisturbed by the problem of pain was suffering from one of two things, either from a hardening of the heart or a softening of the brain. I think he was absolutely right. Is there any purpose to pain? Is there any advantage to adversity? Is there any solace in suffering? Don't be discouraged, Charlie Brown, Schroeder tells him. These early defeats help build character for later on in life. Charlie Brown asks, for what later on in life? And Schroeder replies, for more defeats. Charlie Brown, not really satisfied with that advice, decides he's going to invest five cents of Lucy's psychiatric help. You know, we, we all know the psychiatric help can help, right? So. <laughs> At first, her advice uh, sounds a bit more sophisticated. Adversity builds character, she says. Without adversity, a person could never mature and face up to all the things in life. What things, he asked. More adversity, she says. Our text today from Hebrews is perplexing. It speaks of Christ being made obedient through his suffering. We read, in the days of his flesh, in chapters in verse 7, it says, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obeyed him. We don't know how Jesus learned obedience through suffering. After all, he was the Christ. Still we know that he suffered, and because he suffered, there are some helpful and hopeful conclusions that I think we can draw. The first is that pain is an inevitable part of life. Even Christ did not avoid pain and complete his mission, and unfortunately, neither can most of us. Charlie Brown, in another Peanuts cartoon, walks away from Lucy after a baseball game. His head is down and he's looking very dejected as he walks away from another boss. And he says, another baseball game boss, good grief. And Charlie Brown is just really distraught. And he says, I'm tired of losing. Everything I do, I lose. Lucy replies, look at it this way, Charlie Brown. We, more, we learn more from losing than we do from winning. Charlie shouts to Lucy, who's startled and flips over backwards. That probably makes me the smartest person in the world. <laughs> but don't worry, Charlie Brown. You've got a lot of fun. Dr. John Drakeford, who was a well-known Christian psychologist, says that at any given time, one out of every ten people is going through a crisis experience. Certainly the Bible knows about pain, about crisis, and about suffering. There is Moses gazing upon a promised land that he will never enter. Hannah, downhearted, unable to eat because of a child she's not able to bear. There's Elijah, fearful of his life, fleeing into the desert, alone and miserable. The widow of Nain, distracted by grief over the loss of her only son. The gathering demonic, so emotionally wrought, he's mutilating himself. The woman with an issue of blood. Twelve years of hemorrhaging, seeing doctor after doctor, but nobody could help. There's blind Bartimaeus. There's Mary and Martha at the brother's tomb. And of course, there is Jesus on the cross. The list could go on and on and consume several pages. The Bible knows about suffering. All kinds of 
your suffering. Physical, emotional, spiritual. Many of us know about suffering. We've known pain. We've known disappointment. We've known failure. We've known grief. We can sympathize with former Tampa Bay Buccaneer pro football coach John McKay. In the midst of one of his long losing seasons, McKay was asked what he thought of his team's execution. And his answer was, I'm in favor of it. <laughs> That's a joke for us football fans, and I'm sorry, football season just started, so. But what life does to us sometimes, however, is no joke. Pain is an inevitable part of our life. Some pain may even be essential for our emotional and spiritual growth. All sunshine makes a desert, you say. You know, Lucy was essentially right in part of her advice to Charlie Brown. Some adversity does build character. Consider the unique situation of the birds of New Zealand, for example. That island nation has more flightless birds, I understand, than any other country on Earth. Among those are the kiwi and the penguin. And scientists tell us that these birds, once upon a time, had wings, but they lost them. For you see, they had no use for them. They had no natural predator on that beautiful island, and food was plentiful. And since there was no reason to fly, they didn't. Through neglect, they lost their wings. Necessity is the mother of invention. Scholars point to the advanced technological progress of nations in colder climates of the world. Where food and shelter are easily attained, there's no drive to innovate or to problem solve. We live in a hard world in order that we might grow to our full stature as children of God. How difficult it must be for God, however, to watch us and as we seek to cope with this hard and difficult world. Peter James Fleming tells about a young man who had been thrown from a horse and he had been paralyzed. Slowly but surely he had begun to respond to therapy. And he had gone to a huge regional hospital for further therapy. And one day he was to take his first steps. And the people who helped him all stood beside him and watched. Well, as he got up to take that first step, he fell flat on his face. He wept in pain. Nobody moved. A chaplain, who was a friend and confident of the family, felt every instinctive push within him to rush to his friend's aid. But the therapist would not allow him to do so. Again, the young man tried. Again, the agony of the fall and the defeat. Again and again, the cruelty continued. For it could indeed be called that. Pain was the product of the whole occasion. Every part of the experience was painful. It was dreadfully painful to the young man. It was painful to the therapist who watched. It was painful to the chaplain and others who empathized. But the young man walked. The day came when he was able to really walk. And plainly contrast that young man's painful experience with the cartoon he saw that showed a mother helping her son into a wheelchair. A nearby friend said, I didn't know that your son couldn't walk. And the reply was, oh, he can, but thank God he doesn't have to. Kind of tragic. He goes on to say, from everything we know in Scripture, God is not like that mother. He's more like a therapist. He wants us to walk. He wants us to run. He wants us to soar. He's about the business of soul making. If he needs to work through the stained, bent, out of shape world we live in, he will. His will for us 
is not to make us happy or unhappy. It is to make us, us, as only he knows that we can be. To will for our fullness and growth, he allows the weaving into the tapestry of our lives both joy and pain. He will not give up until we all attain to the unity of faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to the mature adulthood and to the measure, the stature of the fullness of Christ, as we read in Ephesians 4. Pain is inevitable in life. Pain may also be essential to our growth. Under certain circumstances, pain can even prove to be beneficial. You may know that the sound of a violin is determined by the type of wood that it is constructed from, as well as the skill, of course, of the musician that is playing it. It has been determined that the best wood available for making violins is found in the timber line of the highest mountain ranges. In the United States, the craftsmen will seek the wood that's found in the peaks of the Rockies, 12,000 feet above sea level. Up there where the wind blows so fiercely and steadily that the bark to, to windward has no chance to grow, where the branches all point one direction, and where the tree to live must stay on its knees all through its life. That is where the most resonant wood for violins is born and lives and dies. Through pain and perseverance is born the most beautiful music. In the same way, there are those who will tell you that a painful and heart-wrenching experience turned out to be one of the most blessed events in their lives. Some of you may know that Julio Iglesias was a professional soccer player in Madrid when a car crash ended his career and left him paralyzed for a year and a half. A sympathetic nurse gave him a guitar to help him pass the time in the hospital. And though he had no prior musical aspirations, Julio Iglesias went on to become a huge success in the pop music field. His accident marked a watershed in his life, a turning point on which everything changed. A less serious event changed forever the fortunes of very old-time vaudeville performer Al Joseph. He was starring in a musical, Huntington Express, early in his career, when he came down with a very serious ingrown toenail on his left foot. We read that the pain was so intense that it left him on the verge of dropping out of the show. Instead, he managed to relieve the pain that fateful night by getting down on one knee halfway through the performance and pouring out his sentimental ballads with a great show of emotion. And he later would work that technique into his famous My Mammy, a number long after the offending Joe had healed, the toe had healed. And it became his trademark, and it actually helped make him a star. As Tim Hansel says in his book, you got to keep, you got to keep dancing. We have two choices when adversity hits us: they can break us, or we can break them. Not surprisingly, some of the greatest achievements of men and women in the past have been achieved by those suffering with the fires of personal trial. But unlike most of us, these men and women bring from their adversity the determination and insight to do what others have not done. The book Pilgrim's Progress was not written from a pleasant mountain getaway, but it was written from a dingy British jail cell that became the home for John Bunyan. Horns Nightingale did not recognize the hospitals of England from a top tidy, lush, decorated health management office. She managed to do it when she was bedridden herself. Pasteur was semi-paralyzed, but still attacked other diseases. American historian Frankus Parkman suffered so terribly 
that he could work no more than five minutes at a time. And yet he managed somehow to turn out 20 classic values of history. These men and women broke their tribes. Others, unfortunately, let it break them. Pain is inevitable in life. Some pain is unexplainable. Some pain seems to have no reasons at all behind it. However, some pain is essential. Some pain can even prove to be beneficial. Here's the good news for today. Whether our pain is mild or severe, Jesus can help. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews says that since Christ has been made perfect by his suffering, he is the path of salvation and help for all who are obedient to him. He knows what it's like to suffer. Thus, he is equipped to aid us in our times of suffering. Now, I do not want to oversimplify getting over our pain and grief. It is a tough process that takes time and often involves Christ working through the gifts of many other people. Also, some of our pain may never completely go away. I know that some in our congregation have gone through intense pain and grief. Some of you are still in the midst of your suffering. However, none of us can allow ourselves to get stuck. We must eventually rise above it, and we have to get on with our life. However, it is often a very tough and time-consuming process. I, myself, still hurt tremendously from the death of my brother three years ago, from the death of my, one of my best friends two years ago, and even the loss of my dog, Brody, almost two years ago. Recently, we had a big health scare with our son that really worried us. However, even though we may never be able to completely put away the pain and the sadness of our suffering, we must do the work to get beyond it. We must allow ourselves to get on with our life and to rise above it. Frank Lloyd Wright the noted architect recalled how he was awakened one night by a frantic telephone call from a client whose house had just recently been completed. It seems it's been raining and the roof leak in the living room is beginning to flood. What should I do? asked the distraught client. Calmly, Frank Lloyd Wright replied, Rise above it. That is what faith in Christ together allows us to do. It allows us to rise above our failures, to rise above our disappointments, to rise above our fears, to rise above our frustrations, to rise above our grief and our pain. By obedience to Him and our faith together, we can be victorious. Struggles suffering and pain are all experiences that will hit most of us in our lives. At these times, our life of obedience in Christ together can help us not only endure those troubles, but again, it can help us to rise above it. Let us pray. Dear God, most of us go through various types of struggles and trials and pain and grief in our life. Help us in our obedient faith together in you to get through these struggles and to find a way to get on with our life and rise above it. We pray these things in your name.